welcome to Up and About. I'm your host, Eniola Lunge. On Up and About, we actively pursue the development and the prosperity of the African continent. The show is transgenerational. This means that we'll be sitting with business leaders in various industries with diverse levels of experience, and we're just going to be, you know, gleaning from their vast well of knowledge and experience. So I'm inviting you to come along with me as we go on this ride together. For our very first episode, um, we have titled it The Vision Before the Work. Now, if you're out of school, if you're out of a job, if you're in a job and you're disgruntled, if you just feel an unrest in your soul, in your spirit within you, and you just know that there must be something more that you can do, well, I invite you again to come along on this episode with me as you know we speak to our amazing amazing just phenomenal guest today on the first very first episode of up and about all right so we have our very first guest moses ida michaels moses ida michaels is a wellness social good and justice advocate he delivers technology solutions as co-founder of avail sis he blends this with a passion for mental health in the workplace he attended the copenhagen business school Robert Gordon University and the University of Jos, trained in international law, business technology, diplomacy, oil and gas management, as well as philosophy. He is an experienced counselor, inspirational speaker, and writer. He is the author of several books, including the recent Cool, Fly, But Unwell, an easy to read work life balance manual. Good afternoon, Mr. Moses. Hey, good afternoon, Anilo. Thank you for having me. Our second guest today, she'll be joining us online. And so let's say a very big welcome to Shewon Tayo Balogo. Shewon Tayo Balogo is the CEO of Brief Essentials and Creative Director for Tech Monks Limited. Shewon is an entrepreneur, teacher, business strategist, and technology consultant focusing on e-commerce startups and digital business growth. She obtained her undergraduate degree in political science and philosophy from the University of Ibadan and has certifications from Pan Atlantic University, Crescom International LLC, and a master's in economic management and policy from the University of Strathclyde. She was among the 35 young Nigerians from various spheres invited to develop the Nigeria 2025 Scenarios Project. Let's say a very big welcome to Shewon Tayo Balogo. Good afternoon, Shewon. Hi. I want you to walk us through your professional journey. Professionally, I started out from training, tech training, moved into connectivity solutions, and then moved from connectivity solutions into Internet of Things and also automation. Okay, so let's hear from you, Shewon. I've worked in the financial services industry for like 10 years mm -hmm. and in the non-governmental organization sector. I worked with NASD for about four years. We started with the in 2011. So I was running while I was still working and um, it's been a journey. I have background from the University in Economics and Policy Management, political science and philosophy. I like technology a lot, so I've been using computers since grade like six. That's a long time, I guess. Mm -hmm. Long time. So you know, it's, it's kind of been a journey for me, and um, it's a lot of things I've had to do over the years, from teaching in computer schools to being to analyzing policies and to also doing financial related work. So it's, it's been a journey. What do you think is the future of of tech in Nigeria? And Africa, really. The whole idea of technology is actually for a country like Af like any African country, like Nigeria. What we should do with technology is actually to leapfrog. So we were we we're backward technologically. As a result, many of the technology technologies that we consume mm -hmm. that we have, mobile phones, flying, uh, internet access. Not most of it is not produced in Nigeria. We're more like consumers. But with using technology, you don't have to go to the beginning. The, beauty, the beautiful thing is that someone has already done the innovation for you. So you can actually just leapfrog from where you are, just jump in mm -hmm. at that point, and then start running. Once you start running, then you're already setting the future. For example, with GSM, what, what we did was that while many 
countries in the world were still using CDMA, but because we're just launching an auctioning license, we went straight into GSM, which was not a level of, of uh, mobile connectivity many countries have. And right now we have 4G, we're actually thinking 5G right now in Nigeria. So the future looks like a connected future. So artificial intelligence will be very key. Cloud will grow. So people will offshore most of their data and remove more and more on site and hand over data to professionals. So mostly what you will see will be less and less on site technology and more and more cloud technology. So where we should be looking at as a nation is actually in the making of devices because that's a quick win where easily uh, with a few materials we can create, we can, we can leapfrog and jump into the future of technology. What yeah. about you, Shil? Okay, uh, I'll talk from just the retailing. I'm using technology to boost the retail sector in mm -hmm. Nigeria. So, you know, when, when COVID 19 started, it was, it was quite unprecedented. And then, um, countries like Nigeria, for example, would need to work on how to get more businesses online. And I've seen a lot of startups right now trying to get them great online platforms. Those who can give you their, they demand their web stores, even if it's just one click. So, I think that's going to be taken. Yeah. In terms of that, that aspect. We see more, more small businesses going online, mm -hmm. going on the bandwagon to create their online businesses, and then they're trying their best to see how they can sell without necessarily having a brick and mortar stuff. And COVID 19 did that. It kind of accelerated how people adopt e commerce mm -hmm. and the right platforms to do their businesses. And I think that's going to go away. It's going to be different. It's, um, more adopted and more accepted. So that's one of the things we need to look out for for now going forward. Okay. And I also see that there will be more people like we have other people that are trying to make platforms. So again, those platforms that are procurement are also creating platforms where people can give the commerce website as well. So interaction of online payment with um, online technology that can create more web stores will continue to grow in the country for now. We will move in the next future. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So this decade has been tagged the decade of knowledge. So as a young entrepreneur looking to start a business or looking to grow themselves in whatever business or in whatever industry that they find themselves, how can they tap into this decade of knowledge? Let's start with you, Shil. One of the things I, I learned when I learned to know is that you need to learn, take out of very things with for. You cannot consider an entrepreneur and not resourceful. And resourcefulness means that you're, you're spoken in knowledge. You're trying your best to learn new ways to do things to adapt quickly to whatever changes you experience in the environment. And with the technological change, as it's happening now, it also means that people who are entrepreneurs are willing enough and dedicated and put into the work to become resourceful, to learn new things, and to be able to adapt themselves to changes in the environment. Thank you so much, Sean. That was amazing. Now, what about you, Moses? Okay, so um, I like, I really like what Sean said about uh, deepening of, of uh, the ecosystem for e-commerce. Mm -hmm. I come from the infrastructure school, so that's what's easy for me to see. See, we don't own many of the technologies that we use in Nigeria. So if we want to actually go into the future of technology, one of the things we need to do quickly is even for young entrepreneurs and for people who are looking at growing technologies to own the technology, not to fight to own. Because if Amazon services comes in their strength and in their budget to the Nigerian, it will wipe out all young businesses that want to enter the tech space. Mm. So we'll so all true. be working for Amazon, more so or less. True. So, but, but what we should do is actually look at the countries that benefited most from technology are the ones who have created localized ways mm. to own the data farms, to own the servers, to own their cloud, to own the infrastructure upon which many of the new technologies will be built. So we have to look at education, we have to look at health, we have to look at uh, e-commerce, e of course, e-commerce in regards to food and, and the hospitality industry. We have to look at a few of the spaces here. And we have to look at our culture as well as Africans. As Africans, one of the things that we are powerful the most about is actually about how to create this thing in our music, in our art, in our way mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that is uniquely us. Mm -hmm. And that's what we must never lose with the advent of technology. So the future for me in this decade of knowledge is actually the infusion of Africa and the packaging of Africa to be beautiful. Africa is a beautiful bride mm -hmm. for the world not just the stories and narratives exactly. of business that is dark and sad and but we're never happy. When you, everything about Africa is always a, a bad watery abyss or maybe dirty waterways and bad roads and killings. So we now need to get into a new definition of Africa and business and all young people can take advantage of this. Thank you so much, Mozi, for all that you have just said. But well, now what I want to know is how can young people actually even invest in the technology and the, the hardware of the technology that you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. But before you answer that question, I just want us to go on a short break and we'll be right back. It has to do with money. People have to trust you. Mm -hmm. And if people have to trust you, you have to have track record. Welcome back. This is still up and about, and we are talking to two, you know, very established business owners, Moses Ida Michaels and Sherwin Tayo Balogun. And just before we went on the breakaway, you know, Mr. Moses had talked about how we have to, as Africans, have our own technology, have our own, you know, inputs to, you know, the development of technology worldwide. And so I was just, I was just asking. Mm -hmm. um, how can a young person get the funding? Because those things don't mm. come cheap. And so I think that one, one, one factor that really limits or really just frustrates the African young entrepreneur is the issue of finance or funding. So how can we navigate that space? Look, I think with everything that has to do with money, people have to trust you. Mm -hmm. And if people have to trust you, you have to have track record. So. The whole hope that you're going to jump from zero to 100 in a snap is actually unrealistic. So what you do is grow incrementally. If you hear her, she said from 1996, she won't have been using the computer. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Some children were born 96, they're doing businesses already today. So I have like about 25 years experience using technology. And when I started, I didn't have money. Mm. So the whole idea of how you start is actually from a vision. I love it. Yeah. Before you go into the vision <laughs> part, you didn't have money. So how did you get that money? I never got the money. So, so what did you have? What I had was, was passion. Passion you convert into track record. You serve somewhere and people know you for something. So you cannot build, you cannot brand a ghost. You cannot wake up today and say, this ghost is good for everybody. Everybody come and see this ghost, awesome ghost. Nobody will buy the ghost. <laughs> you have to brand something. And that something has to come from somewhere, track record. Mm -hmm. If you're known for something, I was known as the best trainer technology in Northern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, if you wanted to do training, you had to look for me. So when the federal government wants to do the National Policy for Information Technology Development Authority organization, they came to seek me out. So I was working for federal government in the year 2000. Why? Just simply passion. I was teaching state governors how to how use to computers. Use? Do you understand this was the idea of so computer literacy? Right. So passion was what I had. And passion opened the doors to people of influence. Mm -hmm. So the first business I started was called Web Fusion in Abuja. And that was my first stint at entrepreneurship. With Web Fusion, a general actually gave us f five million Naira seed capital, but it was actually all from passion. So it wasn't because he knew me or anything, but he could see how I did my work and he could see the idea was small, so the money was not so great, but it was something he could part with. So he, he laid it down. If you see somebody who is passionate, you can put money on the price immediately. So for young people, not just passion, but also build track record and build loyalty and build faithfulness and build consistency in delivering a high grade service that everybody knows you are the best photographer in town you are the best videographer in town let people know you and your job one job two don't be in a rush just mm. keep doing excellent work i love it one day you you wake up and smack there's a river 
all around you as a young person. Thank you so much, Moses. That was inspiring. Uh, what about you, um, Shewon? What can you speak to the issue of funding and finance? Before I go to your question about funding and finance, I like what um, Moses said about the fact that um, we need passion to be able to build what you want to build. And then you are beyond passion, you need to be able to be consistent, you need a track record. And when you have local sales working for you, they don't need for you to actually put their money on you. Now, I remember when we wanted to start and put essential, I was working at the time. Something led to the idea, because I was basically trying to find something for myself to use after I gave birth my second child. That's like um, 11 years ago, about that. I was very busy, my husband like that's when working for Come back in the night. It was very tough. So, but then I wanted to buy all the garments and shape where that would help me get back in shape and we would put them. But we didn't have the time to actually start going for things to, to find those things. So that was one thing that, apart from the, you know, nobody that sells this kind of thing online, e commerce was brought in and everybody's trying to jump on, you know, mm-hmm. jump on the e commerce bandwagon at that time. As an entrepreneur, as someone who started that for a young person, don't start looking for content. That's not even the first thing. We need mm-hmm. to know what your vision, understand where you are going. And when you know that, and you also you already put in some little foundation by yourself, it should be easy for you to know what to find fun for those. And if you can't put your money where your mouth is, nobody will be able to fund you in the first place. Right. So they need to see that you are working hard. You are putting all your and you are putting your hard work where you are what what you're talking about. And then you are using your resourcefulness to make things happen for yourself. You are learning new things. You are also looking around you and finding how can you, who is around you and can help you to get your vision started. So you may not even have a fund. And in fact, if they are waiting for funding, you may be waiting for a very long time. So you don't even need to wait for that. So you think to yourself about a small business that they're starting something new. Who is around me? What can I, who, who are people that can help me to achieve my goals? So you also need to be the role model for what you are looking for. So just get it started and think together the night as you go. Thank you so much, um, Shewon. Thank you so much, Moses. I think one one key lesson that I've learned now, just sitting and you know talking with both of you, is that you are first the product. Yeah. And so, if you as a person are not consistent, if you as a person are not reliable, if people cannot say it's this caliber of a person you're looking for, then and you're like the person for the job. Yeah then you need to actually begin to work on that instead of chasing after the money. Right. Because once you work on that, then the money will chase you or will follow you. We have we have to quickly go on a short break, but not to worry guys, we'll be right back with more on up and about. Every single idea you have will be tested. Every single business idea you bring to the market will have things that will spring up against your idea. All right, now, welcome back. This is Phil up and about and of course i still have the amazing mozizi de michaels as well as shewin tayo balogun joining us online today and we are we i mean we have had the most amazing time on the very first episode i can't even just if this is the first episode just imagine all the goodness you know that the remaining episodes are going to bring to you and so as a you know in a manner of closing the conversation where would you say that business ideas come from? That's a good question. Every time you have a lot of business ideas, they cross your mind. And but it's just that the, the only one that seems to work are the ones that we, we decide to pursue. So as, aside that, you can generally speaking, you can get to those ideas from what is missing in the market, from an opening product that cannot serve a particular purpose. Then you probably wait for that can actually add to an existing product to serve a new product. You can also use an existing product or service to meet a new customer base, mm. to reach a new customer base that is not that is not been reached in the past. Like I had a challenge because I wanted something like I could not get it in the way that I wanted to I never wanted to get it and at the right price. So another way is to look at what is missing in the market and then build what that what is missing. Mm-hmm. That 
Wow, wow. Ideas are always around us. You just have to open your eyes to the possibilities around you. And I think that's a word for somebody. So if you know that, you know, you've just been sitting down under the excuse of, oh, nobody wants to help me, but it's actually laziness. I think we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our future generations to stand up, to open our eyes, to look, what can I do? What is missing in the market? What value can I provide? So, Moses, what about you? I would take it from the perspective of vision. And, mm -hmm. You know, for example, many people write business, after they, you catch an idea. Yeah. <coughs> you, not write a, you. you not write a business plan. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is to drag that, that idea through a process. That process is supposed to end in the product. Mm -hmm. And that product will be taken to the market. Actually, after having gotten getting the idea, now getting to what is called paralysis of analysis. Mm. So when they're analyzing the product and analyzing and doing numbers and, and getting spreadsheets and all mm -hmm. of those kind of things, which are actually beautiful yes. as part of the business exactly. planning process. But someone wrote a book a long time ago called The Reality Test. Mm. Especially in an economy like Nigeria, every single idea you have will be tested. Every single business idea you bring to the market will have things that will spring up against the idea. So whatever idea you have, it's always best to grow it organically. Put it to the litmus test. So that's called the reality test. The reality test is you're making these products for an online market. Have you tried to sell it to your friends mm. and your family members mm -hmm. and see whether there's a real market? Mm -hmm. You may not need to hire AC Nielsen to do a market survey over a thousand people in your population, mm -hmm. but you can actually test with your church members, you can test with your youth group, mm. you can test with the people in your world whether right. the idea you're trying to push out can hold water. Something else young people, people, older people accuse young people of is illusions of grandeur. It will always be very good to actually get into the reality test so that you're testing your ideas in small places, then you grow it. Take the next step and then always take, put your money back. Never eat your capital. Mm. There are principles of business. I know like, like Shimon's experience from NESG and some of those organizations, actually, young people should actually go and join the Nigeria Economic Support Group. So when they connect themselves, they don't see themselves as an abstraction. I see many young entrepreneurs who think like their business is from the sky and they're different from the whole mm. economy. Mm. No, you have to learn the economy in which your idea is fitted mm -hmm. so that you will be able to know when to scale, mm -hmm. know how to grow, know what the next level for your business mm -hmm. is. And these things will help to establish new business. From my own experience, what I've seen is this, like the next business I had to start after that first entrepreneurship is Avelsis. And we still have Avelsis today, we started in 2008. And for Avelsis, we had like a rock solid idea. There was a need for, there was a gap in Nigeria, was just trans transitioning from satellite communications to cable, and there's a gap of providers. So we went into this new business, and they said to us, oh, we have Virgin and BT talking to us. Why should we give you Moses and Namfa business? Why should we give you our enterprise class network? Mm -hmm. And I stood up and banged the table. I said to them, can I tell you what, how much you're going to buy? Mm -hmm. You're going to buy five megabits. And five megabit is shit for, for British Telecom. Mm -hmm. They will answer someone next door to them who is buying 500 megabits. You are buying five. For me, five megabits is gold. I will jump when you call. I will, you understand? There was a convincing way I did it, and the guy paid us cash. Mm -hmm. It was his cash that we used to start mm. our first our second business. The convincing nature and your track record and all of this thing mixed together with the, the litmus test of your idea on the road will give you a place right. to jump from. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm aware of the law of diminishing intent. When you have an idea and you have all the passion and everything, mm. you're, you're so high on that idea. You don't have it on time. That passion you have, that mm. um, will start to diminish. You understand? So the intent to start the business will actually diminish. So once you have an idea, you think it's going to work. The first thing is you really go and test it like you said. And put whatever you need to do. Put your vision on paper and do whatever it takes to let it start. So it's the fit that is otherwise you might not even want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. it not be that potent mm -hmm. anymore. And I would advise anyone who knows how to do that. It's actually better to work in an organization because they help you with a lot of things. They get organized. And if you know you're not actually profitable in a business, they help you with knowing a lot of things. So it 
working in a place that the, an institution has organized, it's good for people who want to start a business. Mm. One thing I'd like, to, I'd like to include is that you need to have people around you. When you share your vision or ideas with those people, they can also help you to take it further. I remember that when I know we first entrance came, I was thinking of running to college. We had talked about intimate apparel, but the name was not working because somebody else was already running a business like that. So I called my husband and I was like, okay, why not do this essentials? So he suggested the name. And that was it. It's important that people around us also are, are people that can actually help us. They are successful enough to see where we are going so that we can actually achieve whatever vision or ideas we have. In our mind. Thank so you so yeah. much. I was enjoying the audience and clapping right now because you guys have dropped gems on the show today. Like, where, where, where do I even start? You know, having a vision is more than having the money to pursue the vision. And then, you know, Shane also talked about the law of diminishing intent. So you can intend to do something, but, you know, over, you've not done that thing that you intend to do one month, two months, six months, one year. How far that been? Oh, ah, we moved on, we moved on. Now, now I'm on this. And so I think we need to, as young people, as people in business, we need to be calm. We need to gather ourselves and focus our energies on making sure that we pursue one endeavor and we see it through and we succeed at that and then we can go on you know, to become serial entrepreneurs because I know that that's a word that really fascinates young people today. But thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. I know that's a conversation, <laughs> but whatever it's going to it. And thank you so much as well, you know, for watching the show.